switching. Today we're going to go over kind of more of the responsive theme features. So last week we looked at DSP within responsive, done some setup. I'm still working with some stations on that. Most of you guys have been successful in having ads display within the responsive theme. There's just a few more tweaks that we need to do for some stations. Throughout the training, if you have any questions that you want me to go over um, based off of this training, maybe a slide that you would like me to go over a little bit more in detail, you can type those into the questions box, and then I'll be going back and forth between the PowerPoint and actually a responsive website to look at how it looks different. So I will be switching back and forth, and um, I will also then be checking questions during that time. So if you have them, type them into the box, and then we will get started. Okay, so what's new? What is different with the responsive theme features? The agenda for today is why responsive? Why did we do responsive? Why should you go responsive? We're going to look at the vocabulary. There are words and terms that are changed and different, things that are merged, things that are just not said the same way. So we're going to look at that, the vocabulary for those. We're going to look at posts in the responsive theme. Improvements to the aggregation pages, so pages such as your categories, your tags. We're going to look at home page creation. How do you then set up the different blocks on your home page? and then also the header admin and the responsive theme. So why move to responsive? Why are we, why are we doing this? What did we do? Um, I'm going to go back a little bit. I want to talk a little bit about responsive. So when they started to work on the responsive theme, Aaron, our um, previous product owner, definitely had this heart to bring together more flexibility. A lot of stations were saying, we want more flexibility. We want to be able to curate things the way we want. We want to be able to pick designs and templates. And so there were a lot of things that Aaron took into consideration when building responsive to give stations more flexibility. So not only is responsive optimized for tablets, mobile, and all of that kind of stuff, it's also a lot more flexibility for you as a station when using Core Publisher. So benefits of switching responsive. All site content is optimized. So every page of your site will be optimized for desktop, tablet, and mobile devices. A good way to see that is to look at your backstage um, site and then take your corner and resize it to see how it kind of optimizes between the different breakpoints of mobile, desktop, and tablet. Improves, improved visibility of ways to connect. So you can now include custom social media links for each content type, including pages, people, topics, tags, and categories. A lot of stations kept asking for, can we please add Google Plus as a social media option on our people pages or on our social media block? Now you have the ability to actually set those up yourself. We realize that we are not going to be able to keep up all of the time with the different changes in social media, the new ones that come up and come out. So we now give you that flexibility. There is more flexibility. So you can create as many blocks as you like, up to 50, and place them wherever you like in the home page layout manager. So we're going to look at that today. Um, also, there's more options for image placement. So we have what's called the block factory. You can now create your own block. So a lot of stations are saying, well, I want two announcement blocks. Why can't I have two announcement blocks? Or I want a program promo. Or I want to do multiple lead story setups. You now can create as many blocks as you like and place them in any region of your site. You have custom targeting for ads. You can create ads that will only show up on specific pages, categories, tags, or topics. You can also negatively custom target. So let's look at some vocabulary. Responsive home page. So we are no longer offering river and modular home page options. We have combined these features into one option, the responsive home page. There are blocks are placed in regions A, B, or C. And so a lot of stations um, in this have said, well, I'm a modular station. Well, I'm a river station. There is no longer modular or river. So you're not going to say, well, I'm a modular responsive theme. You are a responsive theme once you go live. So we have now merged those in and combined these features into one option, which is responsive home page. So the responsive home page is the option to use the layout manager, plus a river of news blocks, plus up to three column layout. So now every station will use the layout manager. And there's, um, the, there's the river of news, I think it's called home page river, is the river of news. So if you want just river of news, you just put that column in there, put that block in the column, and your, your river of news. Um, you also have the ability to add blocks into different areas, different spots, and then you would have more of a modular homepage. So it's now just one. Everybody uses the layout manager. 
We have the block factory. This is new. You can create blocks up to 50. There is a limit. There's 50 blocks that can be placed on your homepage in any region of your choice using the layout manager. There is um, curated blocks. These are this is two layout options, one story or three stories. You can hide or show your block title. So curated blocks now takes over lead stories and featured content rotator. So curated blocks is now the new lead stories. So we don't we don't have a lead stories. You have your curated blocks. And when you create this block, you have two layout options, one story or three. You have the promo block, so this replaces the announcement block. Promo block, you have two layout options, large or small. We're going to look at why you have a large and why you have a small, depending on what region you put it in. You have custom text and you have custom background color options. So you actually set up the text for your block and you can choose the colors for that block on your home page. Um, no longer do we have the sticky strip. The sticky strip is going to be removed. It is now the site-wide alert. So it's one message only and is accessible through a shortcut within the admin menu. Um, if you guys still, if you guys have questions as I go along, please type them into the questions box. I'm going to continue on. We're going to get into home page curation. So we're going to look at the block factory and the layout manager. We're going to look at these two. I am going to go through the PowerPoint. I'm going to walk through some different points. We're going to look at some screenshots. And then I'm actually going to go into um, a testing site that I have set up. And we're going to look at the block factory and the layout manager. So what has been removed? We want to talk about this. Usability and A-B testing proved that users didn't click on the featured content rotator, the sky boxes, or the sticky strip. A good way to see it is too much promotion equaled to no promotion. If you promoted too much on your home page, it was actually more confusing and you had, um, you had less clicks. And so although, so a lot of stations will say, well, I had 30,000 views on the story in my sky box. But when we actually went into the analytics and statistics of it, it was only about 1% to 2% of the people on your post actually came from the sticky strip, 1%. So it's one person or two people got through there. Um, whereas it's more used when you're promoting it through lead stories, got a lot of clicks. Feature content rotator got less clicks. Um, and also promoting through Facebook, promoting through mobile um, social media is a better way to get people into your post. The people block, this is no longer um, offered within responsive. You now have the ability to add individual ways to connect on people pages, and then you can promote people in your promo blocks. The now playing block. So um, the now playing block within the right rail is not going to be in the responsive. We've actually seen that live stations have not seen a drop in their listening since the block has been removed. And this info will be added in the player tent, their persistent player. Um, and we're, we're guessing a release in January. The podcast and RSS feeds block within the right rail. This is no longer there as well. You can use the new ways to connect section on each aggregation to highlight podcasts. We'll look at that too. You can set that up on individual people pages, tags, categories, um, if you or topic pages. As kind of the same with DSP ads, you don't need to set up podcasts for every single tag or every single categories. I would say, yeah, you want to. But for tags, you don't need to. You want to do the ones that are bigger and that you'd actually want people subscribing to. Sometimes when I look into stations' tags, they'll have probably hundreds of tags that have one post associated to the tag. And so now you have, you have a little bit of flexibility to do a strategic setup of where do you actually want listeners to find podcasts and access them in what tags, what topics, what categories, programs, all of that. So feature, layout manager. So the layout manager allows stations to move blocks. This is when you've already created your blocks in your block category. You now then can place your blocks created there in just three segmented regions of the home page, region A, region B, and region C. Responsive has been designed to look good across multiple screens and browsers. We have developed the blocks to look good in any home page region across all browser sizes. You now have the, we have the preview available in current live CP, but we do recommend that you highly use the home page preview to see what it'll look like across various browser sizes by squishing the window. So you have a full window and then you take the quarter and you squish it and you'll see your site kind of respond. You, we definitely recommend that you preview your home page and see how it would display. You now have the ability to set up your blocks in any region. So before when you, you took a block out of the bullpen, the region it could go in would highlight. Now you can put it in any region. 
And so you definitely want to preview before you publish your home page because you want to make sure that you don't have a big white space in the middle because you put too many blocks in one region and not enough in another. You want to just do a preview before you publish. Block factory. You can create blocks. I think we already looked at this. But um, create blocks up to 50 that can be placed on your home page in any reason. Why was it created? More flexibility. I talked about this in the beginning. Stations wanted to be able to create multiple versions of one block type. For example, we received feature requests to have the ability to have more than one announcement block. So we're giving you that flexibility. Now, in the block factory, you have the ability to edit, delete, clone, or preview your block. And because you have up to 50 blocks, you don't need to place all 50 blocks. You can set them up um, prior to going live in the weekend. So um, you can set up maybe two lead story blocks, one for you know Friday and one for Saturday, and then you can just publish a home page on Saturday and not have to then go and actually change the lead stories block as you publish a new home page. You can just set that up. And how does the block factory work? We're going we're gonna to go into Core Publisher and look at this, but you choose the type of block you want. You choose a treatment for that block type. Customize the block for your liking. I would say preview. You can have as many of any block type you want, up to 50, and then you can edit, delete, copy, and preview your block. So we're actually going to go in and look at Core Publisher responsive. Now I have, I'm in as Aaron. This is a testing site, so it's going to have funky text everywhere. It's going to kind of have just weird images sometimes. Just work with me. Okay. So to get to your block factory, you would go into content. Really quickly, I'm going to change my user permission so I'm actually set up as a station admin rather than a super admin. And it will help where you'll see what you would actually be seeing if you were logged in rather than not seeing what I am. So let me change my user permission really quick. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go to content. Now, mind you, we've been having a little bit of some internet connectivity today, so hopefully it goes a little faster. So on your left, you have your block factory. I've already created five blocks, so they're just going to tell me that I have 45 remaining. I can add a block straight from this left rail, or I can do an admin screen. Admin screen will take you to all the blocks that you have currently created and the ability to create a new one. So I'm going to click admin screen. Now these are the ones that I have already created. I created a small image promo. I created a large one. I was testing one story curated um, election night, small region B, and then test three. Now when you're creating your titles, you can actually select to hide or show that title. And I definitely usually recommend hiding it and then using a very detailed kind of, I guess, title. Because you want to then, when you go in your layman engine, know which one you created. So if you create 50 all large promos, you're not going to know which promo actually is in there. So I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to add a block. I have my two types. I have my curated blocks. Again, this is what was used as the lead story. So curated. Curated block is a block that allows you to choose various layouts and the stories that are contained in them. So this is promoting a story. This is a lead story. Or you have your promotional block. This allows you to promote anything like local events, pledge drives, local programs, anything of such. So I'm going to create a curated block. Now I have the ability to do one story or three stories. I'm going to do one. Now this is my block title. So you want to be, again, you don't want to say lead story. It might be, let's say, lead story Saturday. So this would be, I would know that this is a, this is a block that I've created for just Saturday. I want to put it on there. I can hide that. I'm not going to want this to show on the front end of my site. Or you can say um, curated, curated one story election night. Do that high title. You would then start again, auto correct, auto complete of it. Now I'm going to find a specific story because this is a testing site, so I don't know what stories are in my system. So I'm going to do this one again. Um, so I would start typing that in. Put president. I hope I can spell right today. It's a different story. 
can you give me a quick preview of what it will look like? Now that image looks a little pixelated. Um, I don't know if I'd want to use that story. That photo might be a little too, might not look good. So let's see if maybe this one has a better image. This gives you the ability to say, you know what, that photo just doesn't fit correctly. So I don't want to put that one in there. I want to put, what does this one look like? That one looks a lot better. So that would look a little bit better on my site. It tells me the text that's going to show up on it in the headline. So I can click Save. So you'll see that I have created a new block. Now I'm going to create another one for a promo. Let's see, what would it look like if I did three curated blocks? So I want to do three stories. So I would say curated block, three stories, mid midweek. Wow, I'm just make, making up titles. So let's put this one. Put Is there an image for this one? That one's broken. See, testing. Sorry, guys. The testing one. Oh, so there's a smaller image there. And I think I had... Oh, my computer's freezing up a little bit. Hmm, must not be a good one. So I'm going to pull up the testing new post. We're going to put that in there. I know that I have an image on there. So there I have my other one. So it's kind of, now this is giving me a quick preview. This is not a definite how it's going to specifically look on your site. This is just a quick one so you can kind of see, oh, I actually do have an image on that post because right before that it didn't have an image, so I wouldn't want to put that in my lead stories block. So it's just giving you a quick idea of what might be on there. If you're doing a three post, it's going to give you um, a teaser for your first big story, and then it's going to just link to the title of the smaller one. So I'm going to save. So now I have set up my two. I have a large promo. I have a small promo. We can go in here and edit if we want. Here's a promotional image, same one as my other post. Now I can hide block title or I can keep it. I have my heading, subheading. So we'll say um, um, win ticket to the zoo, um, make a donation. Today. So click here to enter to draw your content, and then you want your URL. You can actually then have a color picker for your background and also your text color. And then you can save. From here, you can preview your block. So I can edit, or I can go back to admin. I can preview my large promo. So I, this actually has a green background and then a gray text, so I can change that if I want, back to admin. So now that I've created some of my blocks, some of my blocks are set up, I have a small image promo, I have a large, I have some curated, and some curated stories now, I want to go into my layout manager. Got the layout. This is currently what your layout manager, the colors are the same, so, but it's definitely different in response. You still have the ability to do up to five templates, so you can create a new layout if you would want to kind of lay out different blocks and still preview, save for later, and publish. The block, the bullpen is now on the right, and you're going to drag and drop into your region. Region A is this top left. There's region B, which is the top bottom, or the right, and then you have your region C. So right now I have the homepage river in region C, so this is going to be if I remove all of these blocks, remove all of these, and you will see so this just has homepage river. This is now, if you want just river of news, you don't want anything else playing there but your ads and river of news, this is how you would do it. You would keep it, you would keep region A and region B empty, and you would publish. We're going to look at the site with just the river. By default, if you do not place your ad blocks, before the ad blocks had to be placed in the right rail, you do not need to place them. 
if you are doing just homepage river by default if your ads are set up in DSP to run in medium one two or three they will automatically insert into the river you do not need to place those blocks if you do not want to now if you place all of your you can't place your ads in I don't think let me see I've never tried this this is new so since I have homepage river I can't actually place my ad in here if you place them all up here you're basically going to have a huge white space this does not actually work. You would have a huge white space to your left, your three ads, and then the river. If you do not place them, they will automatically show up within your river. So you don't need to place them. So let's look at our site. We've published our homepage. We have our new homepage. This is now just the river. So I have my header, I have my navigation. Now I have my river with my ads interjected into the river. I don't want so again, that's just if you want to do River of News, you don't want any curated blocks, you don't want your large promos, you're not promoting anything, you can do that. Now, I want to keep my homepage River, but I would like to put my promos at the top. So I'm going to put my small image promo here. And then I'm going to put my curated story to the left. And now you'll see, why did I do a small image promo? Why would I put a small one in there? Because region A is a little bit bigger and region B is going to be a little smaller, I'm going to want a smaller image in there. I'm going to want a smaller image in there, and then region A is going to take up a little bit more space. So I want to just kind of balance that out. So if I publish, you can then see. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. So if I go to my home page, I now have my promo block and I have my one curated story. Now you see we have a little bit of some white space in here and our ads are still being interjected so I don't I don't still don't need to place them yet because they're automatically going to still be interjected into my river but I have a little bit of a space here and I actually want my ad to be there I don't want it to be that far down you have the ability to come in here and say you know what I actually do want my ad rail to be out of the river and a little further up in my home page. That's going to override the automatic of it, of putting it automatically into the river. So let's look at our home page. Now I'm doing it between two tabs. You can preview before. So you'll see now I have my promo, my first ad, and then my second ad. I think I actually, oh, I never seen that before. I think if you place it, you actually have to place all three. So I think it overrides the whole thing. Some of this I'm doing for the first time. You definitely want to play around. We can come in here to remove these out. I want these to go back in. And then I want to do my large promo just in region A. Let's see what that does. We can preview beforehand. So I don't have to publish if I don't want. I can preview first. You'll see I now have a large promo that goes all the way across. And no longer it goes all the way across. That's why I wanted a large promo because I wanted a larger image to fill that space and be beautiful. And then you have your river. So that's the thing that you can preview. You can take your corners. You can scroll, kind of squish it, and see what it would look like. You can then pull it out and see how it would look as a desktop, tablet, and mobile. So now you see that. To know with your layout, when you're doing that squishing, how it's going to, right now you have region A and the region B is to the right of it and then region C is below it. When squishing, it's going to go into alphabetic order. So region A is going to stay at the top as you scroll. So on your mobile or your tablet, region A is going to display. Region B will show up underneath it and then region C. So just to let you know, it's going to start stacking on itself. So as I go smaller, it's going to go A, B, and C to let you know. I see some questions. So I'm going to go into questions and see. So Justin's saying we're not seeing any colors in the color picker in the blocks. I can click around in the gray area and it'll give me a color code. Is this something that's due to being a backstage server? Huh, I don't know. Justin, I, I haven't tested the promo blocks on backstage. I've only tested I think on Drupal. So I will definitely look into that and get back to you on that. You should see colors. You should see colors in there. So does anybody have any questions on on blocks, on the block factory, on created blocks, on the home page layout manager? 
one thing I want to do, if I don't put anything, so I didn't put anything in region B, and region A filled out region B, so I didn't have this weird white space in my home page. So let me refresh this home page. Oh, I don't think I published it. Um, but because it, it went all the way across region B, now what will happen if I don't have anything in region B, or anything in region A, and I put, let's say I put a large, I put my small promo in region B, I want a, let's see if I, let's see if I can do one story curated, I can put my curated block to my right if I want. Now what will happen if I do this, and there's nothing in region A? Let's preview it. What's that going to look like? Now region B filled out the region A slot as well. So see how you can kind of place stuff in all areas of the site and it's not going to weirdly keep, it's actually going to fill out, the small image promo did fill out, but did you notice how when it was the large one it actually filled out this whole gray area, whereas the small one's kind of smaller? That's why you have the small versus the large. Don't worry about the broken image, that is just a staging area. And then you have your multiple lead stories and then your river underneath it. So that works. You can keep stuff out of one region, keep stuff out of other, and it'll kind of fill into the space. Let's move the small one out. We do the large promo, and we'll see how that looks different. Because I did a large promo, I uploaded a larger photo. Large promo should be for when you have really high res, beautiful images. You don't want to do a thumbnail within the large promo block because it's going to be super pixelated. You do want to use the large promo for definitely to see how it's bigger and it fills into that space a lot better than the small promo. That's why you want to kind of work with that, and you want to preview before you do it. Now, a little tidbit I learned. If you fill out, let's say we do, we want to do a curated one here. We did our large promo. We did a small promo. We put a lot in there. Let's see what that would look like. Whoops, I published. I meant to preview, but I published. Thanks for the test. What does the home page handle look like? So I am going to have this huge white space because if I have nothing in region A or nothing in region B, the other region, it'll just, the other region will fill it out. But if you do have some in either region, it's not going to fill out that space. You do have to kind of be careful on that. So I would want to move maybe a promo or a lead story into that or a curated block into that space to bring it up. So I'm like, oh, that doesn't look good. Okay, I need to work on this a little bit. I'm going to, let's say, I'm going to move my large promo there. Now what is that going to look like? Publish. So it's definitely you want to play with it a little bit. There's a lot more flexibility, but there's a lot more kind of risk with it. So we now have, okay, so what does that look like? Okay, so I got to kind of move it around a little bit. Large promo is large, so it took up. Now I have this blank space. So you definitely need to play with it. Another thing is if you start to put a lot of stuff in your region A and B, by default, if you do not place your ads, they're going to show up in the river. So if you're putting a lot of stuff in region A and region B, your ads are not going to show until further down because default they go into the river. So because I'm starting to put a lot in, I'm starting to put a lot of promos and I'm starting to put a lot of curated blocks, I do want my ads to show higher. So I'm going to move them, I'm going to interject them into here. And I'm just playing around, so mind you this is not how I would think you should do your homepage. You shouldn't put a lot of stuff. You want them to be in the river. Um, and you can also, if you don't want the river, you just want you just want these stories. You just want your promos. You can do that as well. You just want to kind of play around and do how you would want. But like I said, ads automatically are put into the river. But if you have a lot of stuff above the river, you definitely would want to strategically place them a little higher. We want to put them in. I think I've turned. So now you see this is the three-story curated block. And then we have us. So let's go into, I see I have a question. So that is the block factory. That is the layout manager. You can definitely play with those and pull these out. Let's see, we have a question. Yeah, so okay, so that was kind of just, I had a feeling you were going to bring this up. So um, 
Justin said when I was playing with this last week, there was a social media block. Sorry, I just caught the end of you talking about social at the beginning of the call. Is, there, is that something that's gone now? Yes. So social media block is no longer in the responsive theme. The reason why you saw that social media, some of you guys had a social media block on your site, that was a complete test block. It was never meant to actually be pushed. It was never actually set up or like there was no, it was not connected to anything. Um, and so that was just the testing and unfortunately the development team forgot to remove that from backstage. So some of you guys saw that and um, that was removed. So it was just a testing thing that they were using during um, trying to look at the land manager. But that is now gone. So I'm sorry about that, guys. Okay, so I'm going to move on. We've looked at kind of the block factory and we've looked at the home page layout manager. Um, I'm really excited about how much flexibility. Currently, we are a little limited in the blocks. So you have curated block and you have the home page river, and then you have your promo block. So some of the sites have been doing amazing. So if we go to upi.org, I have that pull up while we go on and look at some of the flexibility. Um, we are building a couple more blocks. So we are building kind of ag, mini ags. So you can do your mini rivers. So you can do mini river of local news, mini river of NPR news. Currently, Homepage River, it is a mix of both. It is not one or the other. So um, I think it's the same. It would be the same. So if we have it turned on the back end for NPR stories to automatically promote to the river, it would be in your Homepage River. So the river still works kind of the same. But currently, we are um, just limited to the curated blocks and the promo blocks. And um, thankfully, you guys are stations that said you're willing to go live a little early and um, without the mini ads and the persistent player. So as we look at UPR, we'll see that they have, see what's playing right now. So the not playing block is gone, but she set up a promo block to for you to click to the schedule. Have the three story curated block. She put in as a header top stories. You have another promo block. You scroll down and we are now in the river. They do not have ads turned on, so you're not seeing ads. But again, this is them using two promo blocks two small promo blocks, curated stories, and then the river. So definitely, and then we look at this, going to then scroll. So see how top stories is region A, these promo blocks is region C, and this is re our region B, and this is region C. So as we scroll smaller, we will see that yes, they squeeze in once you get to, so now region A is on top, Region B with the promo blocks is below, and then Region C is below that. And we go even smaller. Region A is going to take precedence. Here's the two stories. Here's your two promos and your river. So Region A, Region B, Region C as you go smaller. You'll also see that the, the menu has changed. We go now. You listen live, then changes into this longer button on mobile. We're now hitting the tablet breakdown right here. So you have your donate, your listen live, and your site menu. And then go live. Okay, we have another question. Let me look at that. So in response to that, that's a really good question. So Mark was asking, is the flexi footer gone? Yes, the flexi footer is currently gone in responsive. So if we scroll down in UPR, you have just the simplified footer. Um, there was there there is a ticket in the backlog for um, flexi footer to be built responsive. It was not it's not responsive currently, and so it was in the backlog to be re built responsive. But just higher priority items have over kind of trumped that, and such as like persistent player and all of that kind of stuff. So currently, flexi footer is not in responsive currently. I do not have an estimated time of when that will be. So if you have important things in the footer, you will need to reconsider how to put that into your 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 flexi nav at the top. Flexi mini at the top. It's a good question. So Mark's question is is in the river will we be able to control where the jump occurs? What do you mean the jump? Are you talking about the breakpoints? Are you talking about like when I do this? Is that what you're talking about when you say jump? Or what do you what are you talking about when you say jump? Oh yeah, so 
with the river, so okay, Mark, you made a, you made it a little bit more clear. So where the text stops, you're talking about the teaser. So um, so when we go down here, are you talking about this? You're talking about this kind of text. Do you want to set where the, what shows? Yeah, okay. So that still kind of works the same as the current river. So you have in the post, and we'll look at posts in a little bit. You have the teaser break. So if you want audio to display on the home page, if you want to change where the text is, you still want to use that teaser break. So you want to make sure your audio is higher up. If you want audio in the post, you want to make sure it's higher up and then put that teaser break, and the audio will appear. If you are not setting a teaser break, there is a set limit of text. I don't remember. Um, I'll have to ask how many characters is on the responsive. Um, but there is a character limit. It's automatically going to cut off at that character limit. If you want to make that decision, you can use your teaser break in the post. You see how there's no text in here. It's on here. There's no. There's audio and then some more text wraps around it. So this is definitely how you want to set it up, you can use the teaser break, or by default, it'll pull certain text. We had some others. Another question. Rob, you asked about events listing, so I'm guessing you're asking about the events module. So a lot of stations have actually asked about the events module. The events module is a legacy product. It is not a current product. It's a product that we built, I think, many, many years ago. And that is not included in the core publisher responsive. So I guess, oh, okay, so underneath you had one more. This is in our footer. So yeah, so you're, you're thinking about in the Flexi footer, you have that event feed, so it shows the five. Um, you would put that in your Flexi menu. You can put a, events as, so see how UPR is doing a community calendar, and then upcoming events and submitted events. So let's see. This is taking them to the events calendar to see upcoming events, and then takes them back and submit an event. So you would just add that to your Flexi menu as well. We found when we were doing user testing that, that listeners, when we asked them to find where events were, were actually not finding them, even in the footer, even with the feed um, station, like listeners were not able to find that when we did our usability testing. So we definitely recommend putting it up higher into your menu if that means a lot to your station. So Anna was saying, how will NPR stories appear in the river? They're going to appear the same way. So if you go through here, um, you will see that their stories are going to kind of, so this is an NPR story. I don't know why it's, oh, I think it's because it's different images. So we come through. So this is an NPR story along with some of the ones that they've written. So they're going to show the same as they would a normal. They're going to show a teaser and an image within the river. Okay, so I'm going to move on. We're going to look at aggregation pages. I did see a couple questions. We're going to move on, but I will go back and look at the questions. So aggregation pages in responsive. Tag pages. So this is second level pages that have a river of content. This includes your tags, your categories, topics, programs, and people pages. What is new? So you have ad targeting. So you can add target to these specific programs, these specific tags, categories, and people pages. Custom description area with images. So on your topic pages, you could do a description and add an image, but you weren't able to do that on your tag or category pages. That has now changed. So you have the ability within when you edit your category tag to add a description and images. I have not yet figured out. I should probably I'm going to test this with one of you guys stations. Some stations have in their categories and tags added descriptions, and they don't show on a live DP site. They will in responsive. And so I don't know if if you have content in there if it'll automatically display if we switch you to responsive, or if you'll need to go back into those categories and save for it to display. So. I would recommend if you have added content into your categories or tags, some people use it as an internal like notes section that you want to clean that up. You definitely don't want some of your internal notes and your tags or categories to show on your site. And then you have the ability to do custom ways to connect on, again, all of your ad pages. So we're going to look at that really quick. We're going to go into a term page. So if we go into Aaron's production site, we're going to go into Miami Stories. This is a tag. 
this is a tag page. The Miami Stories Project is a tag. I now have the ability to have a title, which is based off the tag. I have my image. I have a description. And I have ways to connect. This is a tag. This is not a topic page. This is a tag. It's an aggregation page. And then I have my river. Now, mind you, this is a stage site, so the images are broken. And they're going to have funky sometimes titles and stuff. So, we can go in and edit that. So, we definitely can go in. Hmm. I might not have correct permissions set up right now, to be honest. I'm going to log out and log back into this because, because it is a test thing, we kind of play around with stuff. I'm going to log in. Yep, log in. I'm going to go back to my real Miami's, Miami Stories project. So I have this. If I want to edit this term, I have the ability to edit the name. I have an image. And then I have text before my river of news. So I have the ability. Now let's look at ways to con connect. I just have fake URLs in here. But this is how you can set up your social media links. This is how it looks on your people pages. This is how it looks on your tags, your topics, your categories, your programs. This is the way to connect box. So it does have a little instruction. So how you want to do it is your first part is your link. So be, um, find us on Facebook. And then I'm going to do this, this line, this vertical line, and then the URL. And what you can do, say I don't have any of this, you can literally copy this, paste it in there, and then you would just change the content before us to find us on Facebook. And then you would change your URL after that line. And then you can go that and say, I want Google Plus. Maybe if you if this is on a people page, you want to do a LinkedIn, you want to link to their LinkedIn page, you can do that. I want to add Twitter. So I'm going to change this to I'm just making stuff up, twitter.com. I want to do a LinkedIn, because this is um, a people page. I'm just making this making it up. So just, just stick with me. Um, you do want to put the whole URL. And then you can, and then even say, um, listen to our podcast. Put that URL. And then right here is our, your podcast URL. Take that, do that. So this is your custom ways to connect. You can now keep up on all of your social media ways. Maybe if it's a really, you know, program that has an Instagram account, you can say, um, follow us on Instagram. You can do all of that kind of stuff. So we're gonna save. And then we can view this tag. And we have our different ways to connect within our text and our image. So you can now really build out those tags that you're really promoting and those categories you're really promoting, all of those. This Ways to Connect is the same on all people pages, programs, all of that. It works the same way. So there was a question about the river, so I'm going to answer that really quick. Is there a way to determine how many NPR stories show up or determine ratio of local to NPR? And it's the same as current core publisher. So if you are working in a river, if you have it set up, there is a configuration in the back that is set up in Core Publisher that says automatically publish NPR top stories. And, and then there's another one that says automatically promote top stories to the river. So there's two. So most stations have automatically published top stories on their site. And then a good amount of, I would say almost all, but some don't do this, automatically promote to the river. And so you can have them automatically, automatically publish and automatically promote if you want. And then if you don't want any of those stories, you would have to unpublish. Now, um, if you really want control, so that there's not really a set amount. There, it's just the stories that um, the publishing team is putting out, the editors are putting out. I don't think there's a set amount or there's a way to kind of ratio those out. They are based on per day. And so that's just if you don't want, if you're publishing a lot of local content, it'll be intermixed. If you're not, you're going to see more NPR stories, obviously, and you'll just have to manually hand curate that kind of stuff if you have that. 
So Mark, Mark asks, what's the difference between a tag page and a topic page? Now a tag can, it's the same as Core Publisher, so it's, it's still set up and built the same way. You would create, you can create tags through posts, so if you add a tag to a post, it's going to create a tagged page. Anything tagged with that is going to show up on that tagged page. Now a topic page, you have to create your topic page, so it's not automatically created on a post. You have to create your topic page still through ad content. You can pick up to five tags to show on that topic page, and then you can set up your custom um, logo, custom content, and um, what's the other one? My head. Ways to connect. The difference is tag is just one tag, and it's going to automatically be created through a post. Anything tagged that is going to show on that tag page. You would then need to go into that specific tag, so you need to go in here, edit, or underneath structure taxonomy tags and find it and edit it to set up this custom content. Topics are created through content because you're creating a topic page and then you're picking five tags and any post associated to any of those five tags will show up in that in that river of news in there. So it's still the same thing. It's just you would edit tags, tag pages through content or tags through taxonomy, topics through content. Justin, yeah, Justin's saying that you've been manually ingesting stories. So let's have an off, off phone call to talk about that. Um, if the auto publish NPR content is news to you, it shouldn't be. By default, when we set up core publisher sites, it's automatically turned on for you to publish top stories. Doesn't mean all NPR content is tagged as a top story in the publish. So program content is usually not a top story. Top story is like the big, big, big worldwide news. Um, and then stuff like that. But yeah, let's have a off off this call um, about that because you should know about it. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. We're gonna look at posts. Big deal. A lot of you guys post, and a lot of NPR content comes in. So let's look at posts in the responsive theme. Again, I'm gonna look at the PowerPoint, and then we're gonna move into the Aaron site to look at posts. So on the left, you're seeing a post in look two, which is your current theme versus post in responsive theme on the right. You'll notice that your headline's bigger. The social media links have been moved off to the left. Your image is larger, fits into the space a little bit more, and your ads are interspersed throughout the post. We'll look, options to share posts online have been moved and redesigned. This is kind of a big deal. So we are currently in Corporation using a third party application called Add This for social media links. As a support person, add this is a little tough because if it's broken, there's nothing we can do. So we have to send in a support ticket to add this and they have to fix it. And then it just is however long they want to take to fix it, it takes. I've seen them take up to months, like six months to fix a thing. And so we have redesigned them and we have removed, we are not using add this anymore. We are now built our own share, Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and email. And it's now displaying on the right. Main image now appears above audio in text at the top of post in the API. For a while, audio is, be, um, audio is above when you're pulling from the API. To display a large image at the top of post, add it to the slide show section. I don't think that's much different, but you can definitely make it wider and above the text. Now this is huge. There are multiple image options for image and pull quote alignment. Before all you had was left or right, and I think wide. Now you have left, wide, right, full, offset, left, offset, right. You now have multiple options. You can do this both for pull quotes and images. This is only on posts, so this doesn't this is, doesn't translate to pages or topics or tags. But you now within posts have extra um, options for image and pull quote alignment. Timestamp now displays on homepage and aggregation pages for recent posts. So the timestamp has changed. It definitely now, if it's within a recent time, I think 24 hours, or I think 48 hours, it'll actually have an hour timestamp. So it'll say four hours ago, 48 hours ago, 23 hours ago. And then once it's over 48 hours, it'll go into a date timestamp, just to let you know. 
There are three 300 by 250 ad spaces that can be filled with ads that will display inline on post pages. Ads can be targeted to specific pages in DSP. So now you can actually target them to specific even posts. Re related content has been redesigned as well. So now, and it now displays the post timestamp when rolled over. So when you roll over it, it actually comes up with the timestamp of when that post was published. If there is a post with no image in the related content section, a randomly colored block will be displayed in the place of an image. I'm not sure if stations have the ability to change that color. I think it's by default. A little, I have a question on that one, so I'm not sure. Um, so this is the next steps and questions. I want to go into actually go and look at a responsive site when we're doing on posts. There are a couple other things that I want to go over with you as well as we look at this. My screen's not as wide as I'd like it, so it does definitely look different. I'm going to just go to the home page and I'm going to find a post that's already been published. Let's look in. We'll look at this one. So you'll see, look at this, you have now you're sharing, you have your you have your headline, which is larger. You have your timestamp and authoring. I am not connected to a people page. You have your share links off to the left. Your ad is interspaced with on it. This is a full image. So now you have an image that's going to go full width. You have your quotes. So we're, yeah, we kind of put just a bunch of stuff in there. You have your text as you go in. So let's look at this. We're going to edit this post. Let's say we want, so we're looking in our article, we category. One thing is this, the slug does not appear on the post like it used to. You're not seeing the slug. So let's say we want to add in, let's say we want to add in a pull quote. So let's just pull, we're just going to pull a pull quote here. And I want to do a pull quote. Nope. This one I'm going to add a new one. Why is this not doing it like it should? Oh, I just saw it. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I got a little confused. Okay, so do pull quote. And then do this. I have my ability right here to do my pull quote. And I can put it in here if I want. I actually think I do need to put it in here. I have my now pull quote style. So I have my left, I have my right. Or this is actually the full, uh, wide, right, full. So wide is going to be, it's going to fit kind of the edges of your content. So it's going to fit within there, whereas full is going to kind of run full width and the content's not going to hit either end. So that's kind of what the leopard was. The leopard was full. It wasn't wide. And then you have your offset and your offset right. So we're going to do an offset left. So we'll see now it's offsetting to the left with the wraparound text. And if we want to add maybe an image, let's add an image in here. I'm just going to pick one that is there one. Let's pick this one. It's already in my system. Submit. I can do my caption. See the plaza. And I would like it to offset right. Because my pull quote was offset left, I want to put this on offset right because I want to balance my posts. I don't want them to be all that way. So you're doing a wraparound. So let's publish and see what this post looks like. So we look through here. We have our full, the full image. Scroll down. We have our offset left, and we have our offset image. And then you can definitely squeeze your screen to see what is your post going to look like on mobile. So you have your ads interspaced with any of your image, and then you have all of this. And then you definitely want to look at timestamps and all of that. So you now have the ability to more flexibility in posts as well. I know that they I had sent out a URL. I don't know if it's coming up. If they let's see. I don't know if UPR is kind of no. I don't want to spend a lot of time trying to search UPRs. I know I had sent a KBI post with let's see if it all KBI. I think I had it on backstage. 
is a really good example of what you can do with hosts. This is a staging post that was created to give an example of the different treatments of images and pull quotes. So we have this wider. This is a this is actually called the wide image. You'll see how it's it's matching the alignment of the text. You have your audio. You have a full pull quote. So see how wide fits in there? Full is going to go all the way. You have a full image. You have a wide pull quote. Offset to the right. Again, we have another full. We have a wide. So this gives you a little idea of what you can do. Offset to the left. Offset to the right. So this gives you an idea of what you can now do with posts. You can make them look a lot prettier and have a lot more ability. Now this does take a lot of time to build out a post like this and it's really long. So um, we don't recommend you do this with everyone, but you do definitely have the ability to do a lot more formatting with your posts. Anthony had asked about adding JavaScript, iframes, HTML to posts. Don't don't do that. Definitely it's not it's still that doesn't change. And that's because it is going through the API, and it's kind of it, that doesn't always translate through the API. I think some stations are able to do iframes within posts, but that has not changed from Core Relish. It's still the same. Okay, so I think there was a big confusion on backstage. So Matt, I know that you're not the only one that has asked this. So a lot of people are worried about the content ending since October 30th, and if you have to double post or anything like that. So your live site is still running perfectly fine. Backstage is literally just a testing ground. You don't need to worry about the content on there. You don't need to worry about if you're posting stuff on live, do you need to post on double on do you need to double post? You don't need to do anything like that. You don't need to switch anybody to use backstage. Backstage is literally just a testing ground for a while you're waiting. The images aren't synced. Um, your content, of course, is just gonna end where we copied it over. It is not any kind of impact on you going live. It has no impact on your live site. So what happens is that's just kind of an offset playing ground for you to see what it would look like when your live site is switched. So once we switch all of your content on your live site staying there, we're just making a flip on your live site and everything will be fine. So we're not replacing your live site with Backstage. We're not overriding it. We're not moving you to Backstage when we launch. It's just the testing ground for you right now. And then once your live site is switched to responsive, that kind of goes away. You don't need to worry about Backstage. So you don't need to be worrying about the images not syncing, your content not being up to date, anything like that. It's just for you to be posting posts for you to see all of the new features and how it's going to be displayed. So don't don't worry about any of that. Smart that asks, what's the width of the new story image size? That is a good question. Let me let me see. If I inspect this element, what comes up? This is kind of a fire. Size. So by 10 by 10, let's look at 10 by 10 is your width for the full. So let's look at what it would look like if we went down to, this is a, a plugin I have. So if we look at maybe, oh, let's look at Heartland. So wide, if you look at inspect element, it's going to be 663 and the wide, it be 1010. 1010 10 is 663. Is that? That's a good question. And then your your height can be. Um, it's just your width is the one that's constrained, and then your height. See how they have kind of a, a longer image, but not as tall. Definitely play with that. Some other things that I kind of want to show you that I think some of you guys are going to be really excited for. Um, how do you get to your site wide alert now? I don't have a really wide screen, and I don't think I can plug in a wide screen to show you guys, unfortunately. Um, but when I'm logged in as a station admin, I don't think editors have access to this. There are some buttons I want to show you that are on your admin screen that are going to make all little things a little easier. I need to change my user, though, so stick with me. I'm just going to... Because right now I'm a super admin, so I'm not seeing what you guys normally see, so I'm just going to change my user. Okay, so now my, my menu has changed. So you'll see in here, 
we have all of these setups. So layout is how you get to your layout manager, manage categories, manage queues, manage tags. All of that's still staying the same, NPR content. You have this new button called Configure Core Publisher. That's a new one. We should look at it. You also have, now if I had a wider screen, these white buttons that are kind of hiding would show. So you have your site-wide alert. This is how you would get to your site-wide alert. So this is my site-wide alert. And then we'll put, uh, let's just put it in here. Let's put Google or something. Open link a new window. You have the ability to do that. And then this alert is, um, is important. Save configuration. Now this alert is going to go throughout the whole site. So let's pull this up. We're going to look at the site-wide alert. So now you have your site-wide alert. What would it look like if I said it was important? Refresh. Again, so it's now red. This again replaces the sticky strip because we found that um, it really wasn't worth the amount of clicking station listeners. If we would ask them, we would say, can you find this link on the site? They couldn't find it if it was in the sticky strip. Um, they could find it if it was in the lead stories. They could find it if it was in your navigation. They really were overlooking the sticky alert. So now you have this, and it goes through, education might be broken link, uh, it goes through your whole site. It's going to show up at the top as people navigate through the pages. So you get to your site-wide alert through a shortcut in your admin menu. Let's look at configure core publisher. You have configure your support links and configure default OG image. Let's look at these. Configure support links. This is for your donate. You can update your donation text, change your support URL, and display in a separate window. So if people click on it, do you want it to open a new window? You can now change that. Let's go back to configure your core publisher site. Configure default OG image. All right. So a lot of stations were having problems. When you share a story on Facebook and there is no default image or the image is too tiny, Facebook will pick any random image on your site. So sometimes it ends up being your, um, you know, your news editor's headshot. And you're like, but the post is about the FBI getting in trouble for something and I don't want my, my staff image to be on there. Or it picks the related content image. And that's not really good. And so that's just Facebook needing an, an image to post on to Facebook. So stations are asking, well, can I have a default image that when I don't have an image on my post, maybe my logo will appear? You can now set that. Within configured default image, you can select what you would want as a default image. If the post has no image and Facebook's looking for one, it's going to default to this image. So you can set this up to be... Um, maybe a news logo, it can be just your station logo, anything like that. That is kind of a big big change that's just been released. This is actually, I believe, released in your live site. This is not just responsive. So I think if you log into Core Publisher, you will see this now. Um, and then you'll have it. I don't see any more questions coming through. So our presentation is coming to the end. So what are our next steps? So our next steps. Practice, practice, practice. Like I said, your live site and your backstage site are not connected. Your backstage site is not going to override your live site. It's not, it's not going to mess up your live site. So I practice, practice, practice. Practice making sure your ads display. Maybe practice your custom targeting. Um, practice making posts and seeing how it works, seeing how it looks like. Work on your ad pages. None of this work is going to translate over. So if you do set up your ad pages in the backstage, we're going to be flipping your live site. And so any of the work that you've done in backstage is not going to translate. So a good question I had today, and I know, Mark, you're on this call, is um, because the flexi footer is going away, uh, Mark had called earlier and said, well, what do I do with all of those links in the, in the footer? And so what I'd recommend is in backstage, setting that all up in the flexi menu, kind of getting a strategy for where you want those links to go, how you want it set up, and then setting up your flexi menu and seeing what it looks like. Seeing if it fits, seeing if it works, seeing if there's too many links, if there's little, if you want to remove the text. Play with it on backstage. But when we switch Michigan Radio to responsive on their live site, all of that flexi menu work that he did in backstage is not going to be there. So he has to then, so backstage is just for you to get an idea and to see it and to, to play with it. And then once we actually make you go live, you'll have to do that work on the live site. 
So there is no connection. So you can practice. You can set things up. You can see what it look like. You can create a post and squeegee. I call it squeegee. Squeegee it. If you like, squeeze it smaller. Look at your block factory. Look at your layout manager. The same thing. If you create blocks in backstage, they're not going to translate to your live site. So I, it'd be a lot of work for you to create every single 50 block that limit that you have. And then when we set your live site, that's not going to be there. So I just say play with a couple. Don't create 50 blocks and set it up the way you want. It would be when you go live. It's just a testing ground and your layout manager. So um, during our meeting next week when we actually flip you, normally what we do is we flip and then you do have to set up your layout manager. We put the homepage river in there, but you will have to go in and kind of create your promos and all of that and then put them in there. So just to let you know. Um, now, for switching to responsive, today's a training. We have a check-in call this week that we want you to jump in because this week we want you to practice. We want, I highly recommend sending your backstage link to your news editors. Like, highly recommend this. Send it to your news editors and say, do not share this. It's not a shareable link. It's not set up correctly. It's not, it's not updated. But say, create a post just to see, just to view how it would look. View how it would look in your river. View how it would look doing all the different, you know, alignments, view your your author, you know, view the, um, the timestamp just so people can get a picture for what it's going to look like when they go live and the additional options they will have. But don't share the link. It's not it's not ready. It's not the right. It's not your live site. It's not updated content. But this week, just practice, practice, practice. Friday and Thursday are checking calls. It's, if you all have questions, we'll answer them. We'll go over it. Now, going live next week, I will schedule a one-hour call with each station and during that call you will be on the call with me my developer will be with me as well and we will flip your live site to responsive during that meeting we'll make sure after we flip to responsive that you can see it we'll make sure that um, your header looks fine we'll make sure that your layout manager is set up we'll answer any of your questions it doesn't take an hour it takes about probably 30 minutes your site will not be down your, your listeners will still be able to access it it'll literally just be they'll be on a post maybe and we'll have moved you to responsive, the theme will change, your design will change, and then they'll click maybe to go back home and your homepage looks different. That's the only thing. Your site's not going to be down. We will need all of your news editors to be logged out of Core Publisher and no publishing a post during that one-hour meeting. So with that said, you need to be on the call. We're going to be flipping your responsive. Your site's still going to be online. We're not taking it down to do anything. It's still going to be online. And um, all of your news editors need to be logged out. So to give you guys some flexibility and options for when you're in your office, when news editors could be out, I'm going to be sending a survey today, a doodle survey, and I need you guys to give me multiple options for when you could switch your site next week. And there's Tuesday through Friday, what hours work for you? And then I will then confirm and schedule with everybody out. Give me a couple options because I might not be able to give you your first, second, or third option. I might have to say, remember that one hour you said you were free on Thursday? That's when we're doing it. So I'm going to send that survey, need you guys to give me a couple options for freedom, free times for you guys, and then probably Wednesday or Thursday I'll confirm what hour of next week we're going to switch you. So I see some questions, and we're going to answer them. Mark. Mark asked, can we switch at night? I'm going to say no, only because I will need to flip you, and a developer needs to be ready. Um, it's not a major overhaul. It's just your, state, your people need to be logged out for an hour. So usually sometimes, I mean, I've, I flipped UPR at like 11 in the morning, and everything was fine. Um, it takes about a half an hour. And I think EPR was switched at 1 in the afternoon. Um, KBIA, I don't know when they, I wasn't part of that one. But if you're really concerned maybe about when you publish news, maybe you're really heavy in the morning, but you're not as much around noon, say you're ready at noon. Or but at night, it's a little harder because I have to get a developer to be on the line to make sure um, the database is cloned in case anything happens. We can, we'll have your most recent content, um, anything like that. But we've had no problem switching stations, even in the middle of the day. But you can definitely pick your hours in the, in the Doodle survey. Any other questions? I realize that we're going over. I'm so sorry, guys. I will try to keep this shorter next time. Okay, great, guys. Well, I'm going to follow up with the uh, PowerPoint and then also the video. I'm hoping I can convert it today and then get it sent off. 
And if you would like to join tomorrow's training to get extra, you know, stuff, you can. If not, I will see you guys in the check-in call. Thank you, guys. Have a great day.